That is a gorgeous spot. Whew, that's a lot of snow. It's tradition to forget at least one thing at every camp out, and I forgot to bring a knife. Luckily, I keep my hatchets pretty sharp, so we're in good shape. It actually doesn't taste very good. It just tastes like <laughs> All right, we got the fire going. Next, we got to get our cots in here, get the plates all nice and cozy for days. Is that plenty warm? Yes. I'm super warm. I'm sweating in here. Got some water melting here. I got snow melting on the stove. We got the boys all nice and warm. I need to start drying up their clothes. So I'm gonna string up a little uh, clothesline here. We're oh, <laughs> gonna put a sock up there. Wet socks. I was telling me to pronounce my name. They could call me. That's frozen. Letter, so it's it would be like B. No, is it? Is you name backwards is. Sun sets really early up here, so uh, we gotta get hunkered down here pretty quick. It's gonna get dark, but uh, we're gonna make some dinner, and uh, I've got some fun things we're gonna do tonight. Kind of pass the time. This is going to be a nice little camp out. Ooh, it is so hot in here. You know, I'm, I'm going to open the window up. I am. You guys hungry? Yeah. So guys, I love gourmet cooking on these camp outs, but bringing all the equipment and ingredients and prepping it out in the field is a bit of a pain. So what I did is I took this mason jar and last night I just threw in some raw beef and seasoned it, a little bit of beef broth. I've got tomatoes, potatoes, carrots, onions, green onions, beans. I got some sage and basil and cilantro and other seasonings in here. Just threw it all in the mason jar. And uh, we're just gonna boil this thing until we get beef stew. Just gonna sit it in this water and uh, we're just gonna go ahead and let that boil. Pretty much all I'm doing is canning beef stew on a camp out. If you want, you can just go ahead and seal up the jar and then go put it on your shelf for a couple months. And then anytime you want, you've got heat and serve beef stew ready to go. It's only been about an hour and all your clothes are bone dry. Look at it, feel those socks. That worked great. Well, this is our first time using this tent. It's made by Arctic Oven and it's the Igloo. And I believe it's the warmest tent in the world. And I believe it, this thing, is like a sauna in here. I need to start stripping down layers, but I really want to use this in some extreme winter camping this winter. So this is kind of a test run. I don't know if you can see it, but right there, the floor is turning a little black. The stove is actually uh, charring the, the floor mat. So I got to do something to fix it. And I think my best solution is I need to raise 
the uh, the firebox up. I think because the feet are sagged down into the snow a little bit, it's uh, it's causing some problems. Hopefully that'll fix it and we won't burn our uh, our floor mat. It is so warm in here. We're just sitting with the, the door open and we're still like stripping down. Whew. We are gonna be plenty warm tonight. It's not just a stove that makes this warm. This is a really beefy double layered tent. I mean, look at this. It's like quilt material. I mean, this stuff is really thick and heavy. And this thing is really warm even without the stove. We also have this thick canvas ground mat, which is highly durable so you don't tear up the bottom of your tent. And it also helps insulate and keep the cold from the ground from coming up too much. I think if we keep the fire on all, all night, we don't even need sleeping bags. Yeah, yeah. Just walk and my hat and my... No, not the mat. Mom, now that we're kind of settled in for the night, I got my boots off and laid down a caribou hide so we can walk around in our socks. Who wants a pillow? Me. All right, there we go. There's my pillow. I need to go ahead and text mommy and let her know we're safe and warm. This is the Garmin InReach Mini and it's hooked up to the Iridium satellite network. It allows me to send and receive text messages by satellite since we have no cell service here. It also has a tracking feature so that every 10 minutes it sends my location to a website and Becca can log in at any time and see where we're at. And if we don't check in, she knows exactly where we are. Nice, looking good. Since we have several hours before bedtime, I figured we'd read a book together. And so I got uh, a bunch of paperback Jack London novels here. And I thought it'd be something really fun to read to the boys. Hey guys, what do you want to read? Do you want to read Call of the Wild or White Fang? White Fang. White, White Fang. Fang. All right. On the sled, securely lashed, was a long and narrow oblong box. In advance of the dogs on wide snowshoes toiled a man. At the rear of the sled toiled a second man. On the sled in the box lay a third man whose toil was over. A man whom the wild had conquered and beaten down until he would never more struggle again. Oh right, guys, you want something warm to drink? Yeah. Okay, check it out. We're gonna have some hot tang. We used to drink this a lot as a kid. So it's around during the caveman? I'm not making it all that paper. Oh, my name is hot? Mm. Oh, that's good. Is it hot? Oh. I'm hey, give it Nathan a sip. Give it Nathan a sip. Hot tang. We used to drink that on winter campouts all the time. Hot tang tastes a little bit like wassail or, you know, kind of a spiced apple cider. That's looking really good. TTS. Look at that. That looks amazing. I eat some? That's for me. Mm -hmm. Some of that. I kind of am. It's yummy but hot. Yeah, it's yummy but hot. I'm a little bored that all that. Mm -hmm. All right. There we go. Did the dishes. For dessert, we've got brownies. And this is just a basic Betty Crocker box mix. Throw it in these little mason jars and uh, we're gonna go ahead and cook it just like we did the stew. The stew. Mm -hmm. You wanna make sure you fill this up only about two thirds full because the you know, brownies will expand a little bit. Okay, we're gonna put the brownies in the water just like that. Well, elevating the firebox and closing the flue a little bit seems to have done the trick and uh, we're not getting these scorch marks anymore. But I think I gotta come up with some better solution than that for the future use. Hey guys, the brownies are almost ready. You guys want me to make some ice cream? Yes. We got some vanilla extract, some sweetened condensed milk, and a bowl full of snow. Just go like that. That is some delicious vanilla ice cream right there. As hard as you can. Isn't that a beautiful brownie? Oh, we have a taste. Ooh. Oh. Brownie and vanilla ice cream. You guys ready? Yes. Is that good? Mm -hmm. You like that, Tom? Ice cream is the best. Now for breakfast in the morning, I've got coffee cake batter in a mason jar. 
and I've got a homemade bread pudding. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw them in now and cook them for several hours. And that way, by the time we get them in the morning, they should be nice and done and warm. These boys are gonna be so warm tonight. Tommy's in a negative 60 bag. This is the Snowy Owl by Feathered Friends. It's the warmest sleeping bag in the world. And then Ooh. Nathan down here is in the negative 25 bag by Feathered Friends. It's also an amazing bag. Warm. It's gonna be crazy warm. I'm worried about you being too warm. All right, guys, it's getting close to your bedtime. You guys need to go use the potty? Yes. Do you wanna go outside in the cold? No. What, 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 what are we gonna do then? Mason jar. Mason <laughs> Toothpaste is kind of thick. Well, it's not quite frozen, it's just it's a little chewy. thick though. Yeah, it's chewy. At the front of the dog sled and at the rear, unawed and indomitable, toiled the two men who were not yet dead. Uh-oh, I just heard some popping sounds. <laughs> yeah, I, I filled up the coffee cakes a little too full. They popped their lids off. Looks like you only want to fill them about half full, not two thirds. It'll still taste good. Day begun auspiciously. They lost no dogs during the night, and they swung out onto the trail and into the silence, the darkness, and the cold with spirits that were fairly light. Love you guys. You need to get some sleep, okay? No, no. <laughs> yeah. No. I think no. we need to get some sleep. No. Good night. Fine. No. No. <sighs> Good morning. It's nice in here. Well, it's about 8.30 in the morning and we got about two hours before sunrise, but uh, we have a cozy little fire and I uh, moved that pot on it and it's just been kind of simmering away and we should have some uh, fresh warm breakfast ready. Good morning, Nathan. You sleep well? <laughs> oh, I, oh, he is. <laughs> he's way down in his burrow. That boy knows how to burrow into a sleeping bag. We're gonna try the bread pudding. Bread pudding is like one of my favorite things. Check out that bread pudding, that is done perfect. If you guys don't know what bread pudding is, it's kind of like French toast casserole with raisins. I just put all the ingredients in the jar, sealed it up, and then just boiled it. You know, cooking brownies or coffee cake or bread pudding in a mason jar like this takes a lot of time, at least two hours. But the good part is, is you can't really overdo it. So if you've got this stove in the tent anyways, and it's just going to be running, might as well throw some uh, jars in and whenever you're ready to eat it, it's done. It's ready to go. I think this one's probably boiled for six hours and uh, it's not overdone at all. But check out, this is one of the bread puddings and it's just absolutely done perfect. And you can tell it's done because there's a gap on the sides. Bread pudding shrinks when you cook it, coffee cake expands. This is the one coffee cake jar that didn't explode. Hopefully it's not going to pop on me. Oh, look at that. Look at that, that is good looking. You guys wouldn't like this, it's no good. Mmm, mmm, oh yeah. You like that? Good. Mmm, this is amazing. All right guys, it's 10.30 in the morning. The sun's coming up, the moon's setting. What a beautiful view. It is definitely colder today, but uh, one good thing about it, it froze the trail solid. So I don't need snowshoes today. Poles are frozen. I was setting up the tent, I got some snow on the poles and it's melted and now it's refroze. That's gonna be a hassle. All right, one problem at a time. Well, it's been a bit of work, but what a lovely spot. Look at this. It's gorgeous. 
We'll take these poles back to the car and see if we can defrost them. You guys want to go back to the car and do some awesome sledding? Yes! Yeah. Well, is it? Do you guys want to do some sledding? Yeah. yeah. You got air, Tom! Go run him over! <laughs> guys, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed filming it. If you guys want to see more adventures from the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel, don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning and we have an entire playlist of our camping adventures with over 50 videos. Make sure to check that out. We'll put a link in the video description below. We'll see you guys next Saturday morning. If you like this video, don't forget to check out the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos just like this. And don't forget to click subscribe so you can see other great videos every Saturday morning. And hit that bell button and you'll get notifications. Thanks for watching.